Hello friends, my name is Dr. David Litwa and I am excited today to introduce a book by a Finnish scholar, Sami Yi Karchan Ma, Reincarnation in Philo. This is all about everybody's favorite doctrine, the rebirth of souls, palingenesis or metempsychosis, after death, our true selves entering into other bodies to fulfill its destiny in the great gymnasium of the cosmos. The question, or the burning question, I should say, is whether a Jew could have held that doctrine, and specifically a Jew in Alexandria, right around the time of Jesus. And Sammy says yes, and I have to agree with him. This is a very fine book, a full laying out of the evidence, everything in the meticulously supported the greatest example I can think of, of how close academic arguments are made. Highly recommend it. Let's see what's inside. Here's the bibliographical information. Reincarnation in Philo of Alexandria, very simply titled, from the Studia Philonica monograph series put out by the Society of Biblical Literature Press. This is in paperback, so it's not egregiously expensive. And I think that, yeah, everyone interested that is really interested in, in Philo and, and specifically the esoteric Philo should pick up this book and check it out. The chapters are very logically arranged here we have an introduction with a history of research, very meticulous going back, way back into the 19th century. Then a look at the indirect evidence in, in Philo, then the direct evidence in chapter three, and finally a synthesis in chapter four, plus bibliography and indexes, of course. Now, for the purposes of this review, I'm only gonna be looking at the direct evidence in chapter three because you will soon be lost in detail if we were to go through every bit of this book. And I think it's most important that everybody simply have the passages in mind when looking at Philo and transmigration, because not everyone knows these passages. They are all in passing. They're mostly buried in the allegorical commentary and it's really important just to draw these out so that everybody knows the actual substantial evidence. So I recommend starting with chapter three and then chapter two. Uh, there was a reason for him to start with the indirect evidence as a kind of setting, setting the scene, but my own preference is to read three before two. Okay, so the first passage is Philo's on Dreams, the first volume of that, 137 to 39. This is my adapted translation of Ye Karjan Ma's. Philo is speaking of the souls in the air, and he says that some, those closest to earth and lovers of the body, are descending to be bound in mortal bodies, while others are ascending having again been separated from the body according to the numbers and periods determined by nature. Of these last, some, longing for the familiar and accustomed ways of mortal life, run back again, while others, renouncing life great nonsense, call the body a prison and tomb, but escape from it. I'll end it there. This is as many of you will recognize, based on a passage in Genesis 28, which is the great scene of the ladder of Jacob. And some people go up, namely the angels, some people go down, 
and Philo spends a great deal of time defining who these angels are in relation to souls and demoness. But the focus here is on transmigration and specifically this phrase that souls after running the course of their bodily life long for their familiar and accustomed ways that they already knew in mortal life and therefore run back palindromeo again and where do they run back again but where else but the body which is the realm from which they just left now as sammy points out the greek verb palindromeo in philo has a number of uses and it almost always indicates a movement of one sort or another from bodiless to bodied things or incorporeal to corporeal things and philo has many uses of this of people running back to things of the body including violent emotions or passions and all of this is often represented by Egypt, which is ironic because that is where Philo physically was. But in other words, the souls that are in, undergoing this back running motion, they aren't the good ones. They are the bad ones, those enticed by mortal pleasures and songs and sensations. And so here is a place where Philo, speaking quite literally, refers to the running back of souls into bodies and states why they do so, because that's what they're most familiar with. The next major passage that Sami looks at is on the Cherubim 114. And this passage is also in the allegorical commentary, and it is in the context of Philo saying that we don't possess anything, not even our own souls. And it's Cain's mistake to think that he can possess things for his very name is possession. But to give the full quote here, Philo says, quote, where did the soul come from? Where will it go? How long a time will it be our companion? Can we speak of its substance? Do we ever gain possession of it before birth? But then it didn't exist, or we didn't exist. After death, but we compounds with bodies shall then exist no more. Instead, we compounds who are with bodiless entities shall hasten to rebirth. Here, ace palingenesian, hor misimen. Again, as Sammy points out, in context, palingenesia refers to the birth of imperfect souls, that is, souls who are flawed. Philo does say that Moses underwent a second birth better than the first, but a second birth is different than a rebirth because Moses' second birth was a birth into the realm where there is no birth, the perfect realm of the forms. But whereas those who undergo palingenesia are born into this mortal world of birth and death, and they simply repeat the cycle. So we cannot assume, again, as Sammy urges, that Philo was talking about virtuous souls who were reborn. No, he's talking about unvirtuous souls. These unvirtuous souls are with other, other bodiless entities, which could refer to angels, souls, or ideas. In other words, Sammy takes it as a neuter, that is the asomaton. And what we have here then is another case where, for much the same reason as we saw before, imperfect souls are reborn into bodies. And why? Because they need more training to be rid of their imperfections. The final passage we'll look at is questions on Exodus 2.40. This is in another commentary series, the question and answer series, which 
mostly survives in Armenian, and this passage only survives in full in Armenian. But thankfully, there is a Greek fragment which I translate here. Bilo is commenting on Exodus 24, 12, the famous scene where God exhorts Moses to ascend the mountain and be there with him. Philo says, quote, in some people, the reasoning, unlike Moses's reasoning, becomes fickle in those who, after having been again carried by wings for a short while, settle downward again into their homes of Tika Hupanastisan, not having flown upwards, but rather having been dragged down to the extremes of Tartarus. Again, quoting Sammy, Philo's use of palindromeo is important because it's his favorite verb for returning to the corporeal sphere, okay? We've seen this before, uh, somewhat related verb in, in palingenesia. This is palindromeo, literally to run back. Now, Moses is not a soul that runs back. He's one of those souls who stays with God in the placeless place of the incorporeal realm. Okay, so his destiny is completely different from those who are described here, the fickle ones who can't decide where they want to go. Tartarus here is taken, I think, rightly by Sammy as a metaphor. It refers to the body and the its desires. And we can see this if you compare questions on Exodus or questions on Genesis rather 4.234. In short, souls which are dragged to the extremes of Tartarus are those which are dragged simply back into the body. And throughout, this is all imagery from Plato's Phaedrus and Phaedo. If you've read those dialogues, Philo is basically doing a very extensive riff on all of that imagery. But that imagery had a meaning in in Plato, and Plato certainly affirmed transmigration. And there's no reason, says Sammy, to think that Philo believed anything different. Now, it is a great privilege when a global, globally renowned scholar of Philo responds to a book on Philo, even if it is in criticism of that book or basic disagreement. And such we have in the wonderful article by David T. Runia. Is Philo committed to the doctrine of reincarnation? This appeared in the Studia Philonica annual in 2019. And because Sammy's book was so important and because this issue is so contested, I'm going to run through and briefly evaluate Runia's response. Runia provides a wonderful summary of Sammy's book. And in fact, if you can't read Sammy's book and can only read Runia's summary, you've gone a long way. But to focus on the disagreement, basically Runia disagrees, quoting an earlier essay of Sammy's that transmigration or reincarnation was a fundamental, quote unquote, fundamental part of Philo's views on the soul, unquote. And I think this is fairly safe to say, because Philo only mentions this teaching in passing and doesn't seem to be overly interested in it or even interested in eschatology in general, I don't think we can call this fundamental or core. So that is agreed. But then Runia goes on to argue that Philo was not committed to metempsychosis and he defines what he means by co commitment. By committed here, he says, I mean that for Philo, it would be an essential component of how scripture should be interpreted on the fate of the soul after and before death. And this is interesting because it's one of those definitions that raises the bar and maybe raises the bar too highly. One can, I think, simply believe it in something without being committed in the sense of viewing it as an essential component of how scripture should be interpreted on the fate of the soul. And, you know, not everything has to be essential 
or fundamental in order to for someone to believe it. It can be a peripheral belief. Um, it can be something that's of passing interest. And I think that's exactly what we have in Philo. Rooney goes on to argue that Philo uses the language and conceptuality of transmigration to illustrate the journey and fate of the soul while it's joined in the body. So it's, it's illustrative traditional material that Philo passes on, not in every text, but in a few of them. Philo could well have appealed to other texts in support of transmigration like Genesis 3.19 from earth or of earth you are and to earth you shall return that would be a great proof text for transmigration but he never takes the opportunity and finally Runia says that transmigration was simply not essential for what Philo was trying to achieve in his allegorical interpretations and that's also probably true I mean all of this is is, is probably true and the question here, I think, is one of semantics. If, if you're using the language and conceptuality of transmigration, do you believe it or don't you? Well, I think you can believe it, even if you're you know, not willing to die in a ditch for it or be martyred for it. And I think, again, that's Philo's basic position. It's, it's not a core doctrine. It's not something that his community has made any official pronouncement on. At the same time, he's fine with passing it along and doesn't fear criticism from Jews or other philosophers or Jewish philosophers, which is interesting. And it gives us, again, that very narrow uh, slit uh, of, of a viewpoint of that, that window into Alexandria during the time of Jesus and what Jews did and did not believe. And I think in some Philo did believe in transmigration and he was probably joined by many others. And it's this that paves the way for transmigration in the early Alexandrian Christian authors, whom unfortunately uh, Runia uh, and Sammy don't really mention, but figures like Carpocrates, Basilides, and possibly Simonians, all affirming some version of transmigration and that's a wrap folks thanks so much for coming to listen this takes a mountain of labor to produce um, sammy's book is close packed and if you get it you'll see what i mean it takes a while to read it even though it is clearly written it is very very full of detail so if you like this video show your support give it a like and send through a comment questions also happy to take on patreon everybody this is a very important book on philo and for those really serious about philonic scholarship this is one in the top 10 for recent books on philo thanks again everyone take care